There may be a real black swan incident in the coming hours that has severe ramifications for inflation and the U.S. economy. Additionally, the Fed may decide to lower rates far sooner than Wall Street currently anticipates as a result of this event. I'll tell you about this black swan occurrence in the movie and the breaking news. Do me a short favor, please. You can subscribe for free 999 Naira if you enjoy the videos and would like to help the channel. We'll keep you informed on all you need to know. Having stated that, let us discuss this potential black swan event Iran is probably about to strike Israel. As previously said, if this escalates into a larger conflict that impacts the Strait of Hormo, it will become a black swan occurrence. Delete the quote Iran is actually the Strait of Hormos choke point. Considering this, it would be disastrous for the world's oil supply if there was a 5-10% to decline in oil flow through this strait, as there is no method to get oil through the Iraqi desert. Saudi Arabia and Iran it is essentially necessary to traverse the Strait of Hormuz. That would be a major issue if they were to travel around the entire Red Sea. Indeed, the effects are already apparent on the Strait of Hormuz. Iran's Revolutionary Guard commandeers a container ship near the Strait of Hormo during tense times with Israel. Since this container ship is Israeli-owned, there has already been some noticeable change in the Strait of Hormo. According to Biden, Iran is likely to attack Israel in the near future. Due to the threat posed by Iran, Israel canceled school trips and placed all of its soldiers on full alert just two hours ago. As a result, Biden was forced to return immediately to the White House. Iran tensions by the time you guys even see this video, it wouldn't surprise me if an attack on Israel has started by Iran based on intelligence that we currently have. There's about a 150 medium range missiles pointed at Israel ready to go odds are a lot of those will be intercepted, but the goal. From Iran's perspective, is to have some of them get through, and to make impact these missiles are currently targeted towards Tel Aviv that is the capital of Israel, and if Iran does indeed follow through with this attack, in which it looks like they are going to, yeah, you're going to see Israel. Respond you're going to see the U.S. respond and I find in no logical world that the Strait of Hormoas and the oil supply will continue business as usual there's a very real chance. This does turn into a black swan event and next week could be very ugly for our markets now, there's a couple different ways to think about this because it's not even the geopolitical tensions that the markets are going to care about who cares who's bombing who markets are the stock market is the bloodiest, most brutal place to be a savage. Location, there are a few different ways to look at this. Firstly, if this conflict has a direct impact on the Strait of Horb, which again, I think it has to, then at the very least, it should slow down the flow of oil. Secondly, if there's a blockade of the entire strait, that's like a disaster. Now, that's a disaster scenario waiting to happen, but you've already seen the price of oil start to go up and you've already seen that gas at the gas pump, the gas pump, the gas pump near you is really high. A situation where the Strait of Horus could be partially blocked and, on average, gas prices nationwide reach 5 or $6 would be possible at this point. This would have a devastating effect on economic activity, be it a wildly negative effect on the economy or a wildly negative impact on inflation. All you have to do is look around you, look in your room, Look at your car, look at anything that has an impact on oil. These this box of biscuit crackers and chicken. Um, good sense, it's not that I made them, they were shipped to the shop using gasoline and oil, and I picked them up. Those water bottles, cookies, and other items I probably can't state were not made with AirPods. This is available on YouTube and is from North Carolina's Outer Banks. This cup over here, fantastic coffee cup. Okay, so you get my point, everything is connected to gas and oil in one way or another and rising costs for those items can cause inflation to increase significantly. This is true not only for the headline but also for your core inflation metrics, which technically strip out energy, which includes food and gas and oil. Given this, there could be disastrous consequences for both the economy and inflation. But why would I sit here and suggest that the Fed might be in a better position to lower rates? Reading the tea leaves here suggests that Jerome Powell is essentially pleading with the government to justify rate cuts at this point and they are beginning to face more pressure from their Washington overseers to follow suit. In other words, the federal funds rate has been particularly effective in containing the economy or economic activity in the sectors of the economy that it is most effective at, such as personal loans for cars and houses. That's all gone. JP Morgan stock fell more than 5% on Friday after the bank announced that it expects lending to continue to slow down. This was much the same for other banks. This may be the impetus the Fed has been waiting for to begin cutting interest rates. You may observe that the oil price tends to peak prior to a recession by examining its chart. I'm sure the majority of you recall the parabolic rise in oil prices during 2007 and 2008, as well as the subsequent events in the economy. 
At around 10 years old, I don't recall driving, but I do remember my mother saying to me, hey, walk to the store, I'm not driving you, oil cost $5 a gallon back then, which, if inflation is to be taken into account, would be equivalent to gas costing $9 or $10 per gallon now. Although I doubt that will happen, that would be the worst case scenario I can envision a scenario in which petrol prices return to $5.67 7 gallon. Nevertheless, if you examine what transpired on a technical level on Friday, you can observe that the Nasdaq ended the day down roughly 1.6%, falling from 43827 to $43,717 after hours. After hours, it lost a further $10 for a total loss of roughly 1.6%. You also appeared to break below your 50-day moving average on Friday. This is the first time that this has happened since November 2nd, 2023. That might perhaps occur on Monday. That might occur during the course of the following few trading days and beyond. If the markets were to fall, let's say 15%, if this did turn into a bad scenario that would put the, the markets, the NASDAQ, down to about 375, and then uh, odds are odds, or I think you could fall even more than that, if recession fears come about, if, if corporate earnings really come into question. Which they kind of did upon the bank earnings on Friday, you could imagine a scenario where markets could head back down into the 300s for the NA, for the NASDAQ, for the triple Qs, maybe down to like 320, right? And from here, that would represent downside, because let's be honest, the only bull thesis left in our markets today is, is uh, a people are going to spend money right, and if gas is eating up their money to spend, that's a problem, uh, and, and let alone go into a recession that's not on anyone's radar right now. But gas, if gas does continue to spike, and even spike further, yeah, recession could definitely be on the table here. Uh, and to fall back down to 320 on the triple Qs, that would be downside of about 26.5%. Now we'll see... Maybe there's no tip for tap with this Middle East situation you never. You know, maybe everything will be all right again. Even if it doesn't escalate into a full-scale conflict, that is how things now appear. I don't believe that will occur. Israel will probably come under attack and will do no action to stop it. It also appears that, despite Israel having fired the initial shot, Iran will not be attacked and will not take any action in response. Who cares, though? The following outcomes indicate that it occurred and are probably going to occur again, let's be honest. The Fed can begin reducing rates. Political tensions have prompted me to start rationing for Powell, and let's face it, if there is a recession, we're really starting to ration. Catalyst as energy prices rise, John Powell will likely face increased political pressure to begin reducing rates as soon as feasible. This is likely to occur. Even with inflation already at its current level, the Federal Reserve has ample room to begin reducing interest rates. For example, if you compare year-over-year -year changes in core C inflation to the federal funds rate, which is currently at 5%, the Fed could reduce rates by 8 basis points, or 8 times, and still have inflation above your core rate. Eventually, this could be good for the markets, but initially the Fed's rate-cutting measures won't be well received. The Middle East situation will not be viewed favorably, particularly in light of the acts of oil. If oil is affected, that is what matters. In terms of conflicts, such as people bombing each other, the markets will not be particularly concerned. Please let me know your thoughts on this information. Please share your thoughts with me in the comments section. This could soon turn violent, harsh, or bloody. Messages can be left below. I appreciate you seeing. Enjoy your day, and I'll see you in the upcoming video.